Welcome to Top Advisor Marketing, where you will learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your practice. Brought to you by Top Advisor Podcasting, a done-for-you podcasting solution built just for trusted advisors. And now, your co-hosts of Top Advisor Marketing, Kirk Lowe and Matt Halloran. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. Today, we are going to talk to somebody who has a substantial amount of experience in the financial services industry and definitely has some great ideas to help you as a financial services professional solve some problems and hopefully just overall make your life that much better. Ed Dressel, the president and owner of Retirement Ready Solutions. Ed, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. I'm going to start off with you like I start with all of our guests, which is tell us a little bit about your history. How did you get to be the president and owner of the Retirement Ready Solutions? Of I, Retirement Ready Solutions? I started back in the 1980s on a 1099 when I was in high school or college. I don't remember. Helping a, an advisor write some software. Did it on the side for almost 20 years. Became a partner. And then that partnership um, was part of his exit strategy. So 11 years ago, 11 and a half years ago, I acquired the company. So on a good day, I say I own the company. On a bad day, I'm owned by the company. Okay. Well, what what is the company and what does the company do? We started in the 403B world. We were very focused on helping advisors educate individuals about retirement in a way that engages people because most people think retirement's boring. We, we received several accolades. Uh, Fortune, five, Fortune 100 companies said, uh, their top advisors use track. And just we, we have found a way to engage individuals about retirement. And we now work both in the, the 403B, 457, the federal world with federal employees and also 401k participants, really helping them understand. And then the general advice, but helping people understand in an engaging way what retirement looks like. Well, that seems like a mouthful and, and somewhat of a loaded, I don't know if you're just teeing me up for good questions Ed, or not, but can you uh, elaborate on what that means? I mean, from a, from an advisor perspective and from the, the participant's perspective, please. Sure. Well, you go to, a, I mean, if you're a 401k participant, one of the last things they want to do is go to a, uh, you know, a group meeting. Let's talk about our 401k plan. Everybody's got work to do at their desk. They want to be productive. And typically, 401k meetings aren't productive. And one of the reasons is that an advisor will often talk about what I call the academic issues. Um, they're important. They want to know asset allocation, fees, funds, fiduciary, those kind of items. But the, but the most important question to the participant is, can I retire? What's retirement look like? And the advisor will often say, oh, if you want to know the answer to that question, you got to go out to the web portal after this meeting. So what, what the advisor is doing is, is taking the most important question to the participant and saying, I'm not going to answer that for you. Well, a, a participant goes, you know, if you're not going to answer the most important question, these other ones are tangential to that. And I really want to know where I'm at. So we help advisors bring that answer to that room for each participant. Hmm. Okay. Well, how, how do you do that though? I mean, is, are these pre-scripted things? Are they educational tools that allow them to, uh, you know, communicate in a visually appealing manner? Uh, elaborate a little bit more, please. Sure. Uh, the, the participant, uh, is pr the data is prior to the meeting, the advisor gets a census file and imports it into this software that we provide and creates a report for each participant. One of our advisors that uses is Jonathan Schulteis, and he goes into the room. We have a video of the, his testimonial, and he goes in the room and he asks him, what's the most important question? They often say the four things I mentioned earlier, fees, funds, fiduciary, asset allocation. And he said, no, the most important question is, can you retire? And I'm going to answer that before you leave the room. And he, with that census data, he created a report for each participant. And he hands them those reports. And it shows them on the top their, their, their potential gap, how long their money is going to last in retirement with the assumptions that were made in, in the process. And then down below, it shows them something that's very meaningful to them, and it's how it affects their take-home pay. What's it going to do to the most important number that they have? So not only are they, are they getting told you need to go from 3% to 8%, but they're showing them, here's what it's going to do to your take-home pay should you step up to 8% today. So it's like, wow, this is really in terms that I can understand, not the abstract terms or more abstract, such as contribution levels or money's going to last you 14 years. You need to increase your deferrals. It shows them in a way that 
each person understands the impact on their life. Now, from a marketing perspective, those participants are people that you want to maintain a good relationship with, no matter if they're staying in or not, because if they do leave the organization, do you also help the advisors with those clients rolling it over to a uh, a private account, for lack of a better description? We don't help them directly, but indirectly because the advisors differentiated themselves from other advisors. Um, they're not just here like the relationship is with just the plan sponsor. They're they're actually helping the participant. We get told by advisors that when people, especially as they get close to retirement, they go back to the advisor that's been helping them in a meaningful way. And they say, what do I do now that I'm getting close to retirement? You helped me accumulate. You got me deferring a good contribution level. And help me on the distribution side. So the people with the most assets have the best relationship with the advisor the, and they're able to to, to keep relationships with key people that the advisor would love to keep. And rather than rolling it out and losing it to a different advisor who, you know, they get connected to otherwise. Right. Okay. I I think, I think that uh, one of the biggest failures in, in the market, and and I might be putting words in your mouth or I might be wrong. Uh, Lord knows I I'm told that on a regular basis here at home, but uh, the, the lack of communication, lack of answering questions and lack of clarity on really what a 401k, 403b, any, any sort of uh, retirement plan provider does is their lack of communication or their poor communication. Can you talk a little bit more about how your solution solves uh, that problem? I'd like you to get as descriptive as possible without giving up your secret sauce at and I would nuance your question just a little bit different. It's it's okay. not a lack of communication because these plans, these record keepers, they have a ton of data, but mm. it's academic in very real ways. I've, I oh. sat in, in an office and I won't name the company and the lady showed me every piece of data that they could provide my employees. And I thought that's a lot of data, but does it really engage them to save towards retirement? Does it answer the most important questions? What do I have to do? And maybe you can't step, you know, the example I was using earlier, the uh, 3% to 8%. But what does it mean to take a smaller step towards retirement? Can I go from 3 to 5 And how much will that affect me in take-home pay today? Those kind of questions can be answered really quickly. Those are the ones that are the most important. The other ones, the, the other questions about financial uh, education are important. But let's get the most important. The reason the advisor got the plan was to help these people move towards retirement. And, and helping them out. I'll give you a story of, of how impactful it was. One of our advisors, Gerald Renette, he's with the Raymond Group. They have $9 billion under management. He's a principal on the 401k side. And he was in a uh, committee meeting presenting. He walks in the committee meeting to present what he does and differentiate himself. And right off the bat, there's that nerd who is all about fees. Now, fees are good, but if you're commoditizing yourself, that's the most important issue. Gerald refuses to commoditize himself and look like everybody else. And the guy says, Gerald, your fees are too high. I want you to lower them. And he took the objection. He said, I'll hold that objection until I get done and I'll, I'll, I'll address it when I'm done. And he brought the education solutions and he showed them, I'm going to provide each of your employees a, 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 a gap statement. They don't have to go to the portal, remember their username and password and try to figure out the portal uh, and how it works and how the calculations work. I'm bringing it to them in the room. And he says, and he showed them the report and then how they can take small steps towards retirement success. And when he got done with that, he, he said, what questions are, or objections are, are there any concerns? And the guy who said, Gerald, your fees are too high. Gerald says, he said, he turned to Gerald and he said, Gerald, I want to be sure your fees are high enough because I want to keep you around. So it changed the paradigm. When you're helping the participants, you're not commoditizing yourself. You're differentiating yourself from what other advisors are bringing to the room and helping. And, and, and then you feel good about what you're providing to each individual. How do you help business owners realize the value of having an uh, uh, advisor who's providing services like you just talked about there? Yeah, and we're, we're once removed from that. We're, we work through advisors almost 99% of the time. We can provide a plan sponsor with those reports, but we can help advisors um, bring value to them and differentiate because you can bring that report. And I knew one advisor, uh, Jane, uh, Jane Cadillac out of Denver. She, she was prospecting with um, 
with a plan sponsor and bringing everything out of her briefcase, the last thing she pulls out of her briefcase is the report that we have, the participant education report, and says, I can help plan your participants, your, your employees with, with this. And the plan sponsor grabbed that report and looked at it and said, this is exactly what I want for my employees. So it was a meaningful, like, hey, finally, somebody's bringing the answer to the room. Rather than being passive, they're being active on the most important question. So you, you can help the, the, the education solution helps the advisor move the ball forward in helping the, with the plan sponsor. The Fidelity plan sponsor does a report every, a study every year and says, what's the most important thing? For plan sponsors, what do they want? What's their attitude? In 2017, with all the regulation that was coming around the fiduciary rule, plan sponsors said, we want help with the fiduciary rule. And that's why they were hiring advisors. In 2018, with the changes in, in the administration and all the law changes, the, the, most important, the, the study came out with the most important aspect that plan sponsors are looking fat for is help with their employees retiring. So when you can answer the most important question that plan sponsors are having, you're going to grow your business. The other aspect of that is you're going to not only gain new plan sponsors, and we're always after that other fish in the sea, but you can help the current ones grow more assets. And I met Gerald Burnett, who I mentioned earlier, four years ago at a Charlie Epstein training. One of my favorite questions when I meet somebody using our software is, tell me a success story. And he had just rolled a simple plan 21 employees, 10 participating into a 401k plan and got, and there was 10 deferring. He got all 10 to increase their deferrals and electively roll their money into the plan, 1.5 million. Of the other 11, he got them all to start making deferrals. And in the group, he found $1.1 million outside the plan that got rolled in. That's what happens when you engage some a participant. When they start understanding you're here to educate them and not sell to them, they're their walls go down, their protective layers disappear, and they want to be engaged. They want to help. They'll, they'll much more likely to disclose information to you and really help you out and help themselves out. How many, so if advisors are listening to this right now uh, and they're not in this marketplace or they've been resistant to this marketplace, what sort of advice or how can you help them successfully navigate this to be able to provide more services to their community? So uh, the, the story I'll give you with Gerald, Gerald, you know, with 9 billion plus under management, Gerald's with, a you know, 800 employees, the principal in the 401k side. Um, most most people would look at him and say he's going after big plants. He's got enough resources. He's got enough credentials and street smarts to say, I'm just going to hit the the big plants. He says, Gerald says, I'm not going after the big plants. I'm going after the mid and small ones. I don't have to commoditize myself. I'm not fighting to keep the fees really low. Um, I'm, I'm really there to help people and help participants. And that provides and he makes money on it because he's finding money outside the assets outside the plan and this is where gerald has differentiated himself and he's having a lot of fun he was at a plan sponsor site we were interviewing from a story a few months ago and he just said i was at a plan sponsor site um, and the plan sponsor came up to me and said gerald you're the best thing that happened to me last year and he says i'm just having fun with incidences like that where i become popular because i'm really helping the, the employees become secure about thinking at retirement, enjoying the ability to people no longer, I, no longer think retirement that's scary. They go, I know what I'm doing. And I know the steps I'm taking. I love that. that that's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Let, let's talk about uh, marketing those services. What have you found your advisors and in, in, in whomever you would like to choose are having the most success and what they're having the most success to get their foot in the door to make those presentations and to find those opportunities within their community? I, I can't answer. I don't know about that question. Don't know. Okay. <laughs> no worries, dude. Okay. All right. So we're going to switch gears now. We're going to start talking a little bit more about you personally, unless you have another question that I haven't asked you yet. Why don't, why don't you ask if a, if a participant situation is a little bit peculiar, I mean, and it doesn't fit the generic report, they want to modify it. Oh, great. Okay. 
Okay, Ed, as you know, there are so many people who like to have very specifically tailored reporting solutions. Uh, are you able to, to do that if somebody wants something a little bit different than the standard template? Yeah, the, you know, the generic reports, generic, I mean, not generic, but the participant reports got a lot of assumptions that the world's going to be different. Somebody may have a military pension, they may have a rental house. We've got the data in our software. We came out of the 403B world, which is the one on one side, and we can uh, do their participant report, integrate the sp their spouse if you want to spend the time, but in five to 10 minutes in an interactive way, you don't have to spend a half hour, and you can provide the needs analysis for them and modify it as they say, hold on a second. And especially if they say, hold on a second, I've got an old 401k plan. Well, you can put it into the illustration in 20 seconds and show them how it impacts that and then follow up with a question, what are you doing with that money and how are you managing it? So they look at you like, well, what do you mean? And it says, well, I assumed that you were, you were managing this money. If you're not, I'm going to put a lower rate of return on it so that you know, you, we, we, we alleviate some of the risk of it not being managed well if you want to roll it in the 401k plan. So there's the ability to help the participants both at the group level and also on the one-on-one -on -one level. You know, I try to come as prepared as I can to to these podcasts, but is there anything else that I, I should be asking you before we have an opportunity to to get to know you a little bit more personally? No, I'll, I'll, I'll defer on that note. You've, you've done oh. a good job. <laughs> hey, all right, dude. That's not too shabby. All right. Okay, Ed, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have an opportunity to, to get to know who you are as a human being, because as you know, people like to do business with people they like and have things in common with. So when you're not working, what do you do for fun? Well, there's a number of things. I got five kids, four of them are in college, so I get a good chance to visit them wherever they're at. Um, and if I'm not doing that, I'm training for a triathlon. So I, I, oh. I was in the pool this morning, ran yesterday, biked the day before, I'll run tonight. I got a Olympic triathlon I'm doing in a month and I'm hoping to make the podium crossing my fingers and working really hard. Wow. That's some serious discipline, man. I didn't want to get up this morning at five o'clock and be in the pool <laughs> a little after five 30. Yes. I, it, it was, it's, but I've been doing it 180 days. I've been really working hard for 180 days. I've got 25 days left for my race. Wow. When, uh, what is one go-to thing that you have, like a, a piece of advice? It can be a book. It can be a TED talk. Uh, it can be, uh, an article that you read when, when somebody says to you and, and you like them as a human and you want to just give them a little bit of, uh, life insight from all of your experience, what is your go-to handoff? You know, it's going to be to depend on the context, but on a general generic level, uh, we're humans, not, we're human beings, not human doers relate to people, get to know people. Uh, you're not going to get to the end of your life and go, man, I'm just thankful I built a great business. You're going to say, I'm thankful I love the people around me and they love me back. Who's your hero? I love reading the Gospels and, and reading about Christ. I, I'm stunned by who he was and how he treated people, people that I may go there, wow, really? But he was very graceful with, with broken people, and it's a good example to me. If you had all of the money in the world that you ever needed, what would you do? I would help people. And that's a complicated answer. That's getting, you know, you start pulling that apart, but hel helping the world, it's such a broken place. And there's so many needy people. You can't throw money at problems. That's part of the problem with m money, but try to figure out how to help them as best as I can. Nice. Okay. Who's your favorite person in history? So, so it, it can go along with your hero. Uh, it, you know, it can be a, a political figure or somebody historically. It doesn't matter if it's recent or, or way past. Who's your favorite person in history and why? I really like Abe Lincoln. Oh. Uh, I like his values. I'm stunned by his character, how much flack he put up with from the press, and how humble he was, uh, even in his marriage, and how he still moved forward with knowing where he was going to go. He put a team, uh, the book Team of Rivals. I've started it, haven't finished it, but it's his his whole dynamic and leadership is a great example to me. When you think of the word success, what does that mean to you, and how do you define it? Success is is reaching a, a stated goal, but with the in the context of healthy relationships and getting there and not stepping on anybody in the way where everybody arrives together, not 
that people push down as you get there. Name one thing that most people don't know about you. Spent a couple of years in Africa in high school, formidable years. First two years of high school, my dad found work over there when the recession was here. Had a great time. It was awfully difficult. Went to boarding school, but uh, it was uh, very, very eye-opening. And um, the next time I got back to Africa, I landed. As soon as I landed, I just smelled it. It was a different country. I was, lived in South Africa, and I went to Niger when I second time. And I absolutely loved being there. There's something about Africa that's in my heart. Almost the last question. What is your motto or mantra that you say to yourself when you feel like you're off track and, and need to recenter yourself? Uh, one of them is bitter, not, uh, bitter or better, uh, if you, especially when you get knocked sideways by a person or, or an event in life. Don't get bitter about it. Um, I've spent enough time in, in that world where I was yeah, personally harmed. It was like, that's just not going to help me. Um, getting better. Just focus on improving it. The only, you know, get lack of forgiveness is a lot like drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. That sounded like you practiced that, man. That was awesome. I've lived it. So <laughs> that's awesome. All right. If you could give a new agent or new advisor one piece of advice about this industry, what would it be? Care about people. I don't care if you're working a big 401k plan or you're working small plan, uh, you know, individuals care about the people you're with. And that's when you get to the end of, end of the road and you go, Hey, what, and you look back, you're going to be happy that you helped the people you were around. So Ed, after everybody's listened to this, uh, what is the best way for them to reach out to you and who is your ideal person to reach out to your organization? So if you're working as an advisor with 403B you know, in the 403B world, we have a 600 p pension plans we can illustrate cash flow from. If you're a 401k advisor, I got, reach out to us and let us show you what we can do. We're very focused. And if you go, boy, we got compliance issues on the 401k side, we have answers for that. But helping, you know, if you're helping individuals and then general middle America, a lot of the financial planning software out there is designed for high net worth people. We're focused on middle America and having helping the average person look at retirement in a way that makes sense to them. And what is the best way for them to reach out to your organization? Uh, RetireReady.com is our website, or you can give us a call at 503-831-1111. Well, Ed, I really, really want to appreciate it. I, I didn't preface the, the, the podcast by saying we really haven't talked on the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast a lot about this environment. And I really, really appreciate you giving our listeners an opportunity to learn more about who you are, what you do, and what they can do to help so many more people, which will in, in turn grow their business and really just make them a, a better person within the community. So I appreciate that. Thank you for your time. All right, everybody, if you have not subscribed to the podcast, make sure you click that subscribe now button below. That way, every time we come out with a new podcast, we'll show up directly on your listening device. And if you have a topic, idea, or a, a person that we should interview, all you have to do is email me at matt at topadvisorm, and the M is for marketing, dot com. If uh, you have not subscribed, subscribe. If you want to share it, share it. You know all of that stuff by now. We're a hundred and some odd episodes into this, and we really do appreciate any feedback that you're going to have about the podcast specifically. If you truly want to be an expert and be looked at as a person who provides amazing education, advice, and service to the 403B, 401k market, please make sure that you reach out to the folks at the Retirement Ready Solutions or Retirement Ready Solutions. I don't know why I keep putting a the in front of that. But uh, for everybody at Retirement Ready Solutions and all of us here at Top Advisor Marketing, we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Are you ready to change the way you communicate with your clients? Are you tired of being the best kept secret in your area? Learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your business. Contact us today and see what the power of podcasting can do for your business. Click on the Contact Us link on our website at topadvisormarketing.com and set up a call to learn more. Follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook for more updates and information. This was brought to you by iris.xyz, a platform helping financial professionals become better in business and life through new media and new voices. Visit them and learn more at iris.xyz.